All right, guys, today we are going to Njuku Racing. It's about an hour drive away from our house. But we get to go visit the S15 and make an update that I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for. Whenever I come out to the garage, I kind of stare at just the rear ends of all the cars. And it's funny how much of a similarity there is with the Mustangs and the 240s. Like, I feel like they almost could have made the Mustang a hatch if you look at the lines on the trunk, which would have been sick. I love hatches. is on your left, Injuku Racing Parts, LLC. So we are back at the shop at Injuku, and I'd like to introduce you guys to Bub, who is going to be the lead engineer, the mastermind behind this S15. What do you think about this thing? Um, it needs a lot of work. Okay, so <laughs> we, we have a lot to go over, and I think the first thing we should talk about, how did you hang these lights from the ceiling that high? Uh, we rented a scissor lift, and for four days, I was 25 feet in the air. The good thing is though, now we have good lighting for the S15, so this will be its permanent home probably for what, like six or seven months or something absurd? Yeah, definitely six months. You guys know, like this obviously isn't just an engine swap in an S15, this is a full-blown race car. The whole entire thing is getting stripped, powder coated. We'll go over a little bit more about what's gonna happen first. This isn't something that just happens overnight. If you want to do it right, it's gonna take a while. I already have a car that runs, so there's no sense in rushing this and then coming out with a less cool end product. The next month, I'm actually gonna be gone between SEMA and EBISU, so uh, Bob is gonna hopefully get to work on the car. You have dry sump set up for the RB, right? Yes, we just had daily engineering do a dry sump for the RB series motor, and uh, I still needed to actually test it, fit it, make sure it goes in the car, clears everything that we needed to clear and uh, perform the way it needs to, so. So that, that's for Kevin's car, and his stuff is way more important than mine. There's no rush for this car. There's, it's not a big deal whatsoever. So uh, he's gonna work on this. This is his next priority, and then we're gonna get started on the S15. So hopefully some stuff will start to get done over the next month before I get back, but if it doesn't, like this stuff's way more important. But there is a full-time media guy here by the name of Andrew who's gonna cover anything that goes on when it comes down to the S15 is to tear it down for every nut and bolt that it has. It's uh, all the seam sealers gotta come out, all the body panels, all the interior, everything has to come off. It kind of sucks that I'm not gonna be here for that because I feel like that's where I can be of the most help. Well, I mean, I guess I guess I could hope that you don't get to it, but then at the same time, like I hope that you get to it, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like a, a double trade-off. Once it's been stripped of everything, all the seam welding, get everything physically as strong as I can on its OEM parts, uh, body panels and whatnot, and then start developing the cage and fit it as tightly as possible. Could you could you show them kind of like an example of something that you would seam weld? Like, um, Just because uh, I feel like it's kind of like not the most common thing if you're not familiar with race cars. I mean, you can, well, actually, let's go to the front and you can see it right there. All of your strut towers, all of the paneling, everything around it, reinforcing it, making sure the body panels don't flex and start breaking its original uh, factory welds. So it all strengthens and just makes the car stronger without necessarily being able to tie into it. Uh, Formula D doesn't allow you to uh, strengthen the chassis, so the best you can do is basically just weld all of your overlaps, make it stronger. I've said over and over again that this is like technically gonna be built to like FD car specs, so if for whatever reason down the road, I do want to do some sort of Formula Drift stuff. It doesn't need to be rebuilt, but I just don't want, every time I bring up FD, people are like, oh, you're gonna do FD? <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty much in the engine bay, inside the car. Do you do a lot of like welding underneath as well? Yes, it's inside, top, bottom, side to side. It's, if there's a seam that is structural, make it stronger. It's, uh, it's just, a, for me, it's a standard thing on a race car. So Bub gave me some bad news about the roof. <laughs> do you want to tell him what you told me? It's sad. <laughs> it's a very sad roof. So um, I was told that the uh, the hood flew up sometime in Japan and crushed the roof, but I'm, I'm gonna be honest, it looks like this car came over in a container and the beams on the top of the container like probably crushed the car because the car probably bounced around. I would agree with that. This looks like OEM window trim. Oh yeah, the window would have been shattered. If, yeah, it... yeah. if that came up, then it's that's done. But this is... Uh, it's not something easily fixed. I'm sure there's body people out there who can, but they make a lot of money. Uh, so it's easier at this point. If we can get just this carbon fiber skin, that would be just as good. I mean, even if it was fiberglass, it doesn't really matter. It just My OCD is to have perfect panels all the time. I'm with you. 
that would be just baller to have a carbon fiber roof. I, mean, I know, I'd be into that. I'd love that. Could you imagine though if we like built the whole car super nice and just left the dented roof? <laughs> Dude, we could put a roof scoop on it. Oh God. <laughs> They'd cover it up perfectly, just like a, a massive like Subaru STI scoop. <laughs> Originally, I wanted to keep as much of the door of the S15 as I could so I could still have like roll up windows and drive it around. Like, well, I guess I can't drive it around town, but I still wanted to be able to, you know, have some of the nice streetcar functions. But I'm starting to learn that it's better to just kind of sacrifice the street ability for the actual performance of the car and kind of like the ease of working on it. Absolutely. I mean, for me, uh, it's race car. Build a race car, make it full race car, make it light, make it make it good, make it safe. Uh, but for me, door bars are a huge, huge, huge safety feature. Uh, having NASCAR style door bars, having it as far out, protects the driver by having more material away from the driver. It's safer, it's stronger, and why not? The cage is literally pressed up against the door, so it, it can't move anywhere where the typical style cage, if you even want to call it typical, like I have in my S13, uh, if it got hit, the door could actually push quite a bit in, and before it actually comes in contact with the cage, it's already so close to me that it could probably do something to my arm that wouldn't feel good. Absolutely. It can get your arm, it can get your hip, it can get your leg, uh, depending on how hard it hit, where it hit, and whatnot. So, you know, your best bet is just to keep it as far away from you as possible. So hopefully by the time it gets close to you, the accident's already done and over with, all your forces are gone and you're just good to go. Uh, if you aren't familiar with this car, if you haven't seen it before, this is actually Kevin Lawrence's car. He's gonna be driving in Pro One and Formula Drift next year. He just had a really awesome feature with Hoonigan. So if you guys wanna check that out, I'll put it in the description. Hoonigan's the homies, they make sweet videos. So I think this is probably a good example of kind of what this car will kind of look like in a way. Uh, well, well not, not look like aesthetically, but in terms of the, the way that you fabricate a lot of things. Yeah, how it's built, S14s and S15s, dimension-wise and suspension-wise, uh, they're the same car. The, their biggest difference is just their bodies. I can literally copy-paste what I've done with Kevin's car to your car, and uh, that'll make everything so much easier because I'm not doing anything new. Uh, it's just if there's anything I didn't like how I did in Kevin's car or per your preferences, we can change and make things easier. The funny thing too is Kevin's car is actually right-hand drive, so you're already used to working on right-hand drive cars. <laughs> so uh, Bub's mom actually makes these dashes. So she, is this like suede? It's a suede, um, double stitched. It's got uh, the gold thread just to give it that bling look. I like it. I, I definitely want to do the same thing in the S15. Does, uh, does your mom have like a website that we could plug? Uh, she's uh, maybe she's basically a, a one-man band. She's got a little shop in the back of her house that she okay. works out of. <laughs> she's happy and content with that. So okay, so <laughs> no mass-producing dashes from mom. N no. Okay. Originally, I wanted to do a front mount radiator setup in the S15, which would be a normal radiator setup. I don't remember what convinced me out of doing the front radiator setup. Did you convince me out of it? Oh, okay. Well, anyway, we're not doing that anymore. Conversation. That was two weeks ago. That was, I don't remember that. Anyway, uh, someone someone sold me on doing a rear mount setup. Because we are going to be doing a very similar setup of the rear mount radiator that's on Kevin's car on the S15. Yeah, it's, uh, it's mostly just serviceability. It gets things out of the engine bay. Uh, it helps on weight distribution. You're moving more weight from the front of the car to the back of the car, especially your two J's uh, with Kevin's car and RB. It's an iron block, it's a big heavy iron block, so you wanna get that weight to the back. Uh, it helps in cooling, you're just, you have so much more fluid in your cooling system, it will cool better. Uh, you get better, well I can't really say you get more airflow, but you get good airflow through it, so it's, we've never had a cooling issue with Kevin's car in the two years that it's been built this way. Uh, it runs very cool, it stays cool, so why break the formula for that? I think the biggest difference you'll see with the S15 build as compared to my S13 is just how it's designed for serviceability, so everything's a lot easier to disassemble, stuff's easier to access, so even down to the body panels are going to be very easy to remove. We use Zeus fasteners on the body panels. Uh, when you have a five minute call for us, 
it's uh, very vital that you can get as many people into the area that needs to be fixed, typically rear suspension or front suspension. Uh, one of my ideas, and apparently a lot of people love it, is the fact that you can pull with just a few, I mean, within a few seconds, you pull all the Zeus fasteners out, and the whole panel is off, it's out of the way, you can get more arms and more bodies in there to make the repair. Uh, it also gives us the chance if we have an impact with a wall or another car and the body panel is destroyed, uh, we always want to look good for our sponsors, so we can always pop another one on within a few minutes and get back out on track and no one would know the difference. I don't know if I filled you guys in on what kit I exactly got for the S15 or not, but I did order a kit and I did order two of them. It's a 50 millimeter wide body. Uh, I'll give you guys more details once it comes in because I think that'll be a fun thing to kind of make a video fitting them to the car and getting all excited about it. Sure. But uh, another cool thing about being able to remove all the body panels easily from bumpers got these cool fasteners too. Is it just two of them? That's it? There's two, there's one on each side, and then I typically have two fasteners in the front. The whole bumper comes off out of the way. Again, serviceability. Makes it easier for loading. Yeah, uh, loading the cars, they're so low, they typically don't get on the trailers without taking the bumpers off. Uh, so. When we're in a rush and we're trying to like make it to Chili's after the event and Chili's is about to close, instead of taking forever to take the front bumper off, it'll only take a minute. This is true. We can so then, food exactly. It's all about serviceability and feeding yourself. Because of the fact that we want to do the car right and have it sandblasted and powder coated, before we can really uh, do that, everything needs to be fitted, all the body panels, all the brackets need to be made, where everything mounts. So basically the entire car has to get built first before we can take it apart, then powder coat it, and then start reassembling it, and then maybe drive it, maybe by next Christmas or the Christmas after that. Maybe before. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. It'd be a sweet birthday present to have the car done. May 5th, that's doable. It's, it's doable. We'll see. We'll see. It's doable. We might need to start cloning you. It would make my life so much easier. <laughs> so I've got to run. I don't want to hold Bub up too much longer. It's already after hours. I've got some friends that I'm meeting up with too, but uh, I want to make a quick update. We, uh, we had to talk about some things. That way, if you want to get to work while I'm gone, you're not waiting on me for information. True. But um, I'm definitely excited. I'm looking forward to seeing what we can brew up. I'm looking forward to it. So I'm hoping this little update will kind of give you guys some more information and set the stage off to start this build right. You guys also know I like to be as transparent as possible with you guys with as much that I possibly can and I saw that there were some questions, confusion, and comments about how this whole thing is working with me and Njuku. So I just wanted to give you a little bit more information. They are basically fully sponsoring the build of this car, which is amazing. Like this type of thing just doesn't happen, especially with brands like Njuku. So that's why I've been so hyped since the beginning. Now I'm responsible for parts of course, but I'm hoping because I'm working with a really legitimate brand like Injuku, it'll make it a little bit easier to get hookups on parts because Injuku is such a well-known legitimate company that builds insane cars. So I get an amazing build done on the S15 and in exchange they get a lot of promotion both through these videos and when I go to events all over the country because they do have a pretty large presence in FD but I feel like what we do is so different and I'm really excited to be able to hang out there and kind of show you guys the behind the scenes in Juku and really dive into what it takes to build a legitimate race car. I've got some exciting stuff tomorrow too so that shouldn't disappoint but anyway guys I will see you tomorrow and I hope you have a great weekend.